This is a check chain, not a choke chain. And as I said in the intro to this series, if you're using it as a choker, then you really need to give your head a wobble and watch the rest of this video. Welcome back to the second part of our series of videos which focus on dog training aids and equipment. And in this video, we'll be looking at all things chains and collars. So let's address the elephant in the room. This is a check chain, not a choke chain. If you're calling it a choker or using it to choke, then you need to see a professional dog trainer that knows how to use it. It's designed on a leash correction to check your dog and then more importantly, for the pressure to be released when the dog is doing what we want, walking on our left-hand side on a loose lead. The pressure must release, and for the check chain to be used correctly, it needs to be fitted correctly. So the check chain is a relatively simple bit of equipment. It's been around for Lord knows how many years. You've got an O-ring on either end, and one of those is gonna be active, and one of those is going to be passive. Before we move forward though, I'm gonna just show you the most common mistake that people make with a check chain and we see this all the time what people do is they take the two o-rings and they'll wrap it around their dog's neck and they'll put a lead clip through the two o-rings so they've got a noose look this is no use to man nor beast it's completely ineffective it's not what the chain was designed for and the dog will escape from this really easily so how do we put the check chain on correctly as i mentioned earlier a check chain has two O-rings, one on either end. Now, one of these is going to be active and one's going to be passive. We'll come to that in a moment. The first thing you need to do is take the O-ring and feed the chain through the O-ring, like so. So this O-ring is active and this one is passive. And you can see that the chain flows freely through this O-ring, the passive O-ring. So if we pull the active O-ring, it flows freely through the passive one. That's really important. The next important thing is to make sure we actually put it on the dog correctly. So an easy way to remember how to put this on your dog, and this is a cheesy bit of marketing on our part, is to make a P with the check chain. So from where you're stood behind the camera, we've made a P with the check chain. We always promote the dog to sit on our left hand side. So this is where the dog is going to end up. But for the purposes of this video, you're stood in front of your dog and you've made a P with this chain. Your dog is sat in front of you. Hi, woof, woof. And you're going to place the chain straight over their head like that. Nice and loose. What you're then going to do is walk around onto your dog's right hand side and clip the lead to that active O-ring. As with any bit of equipment, there's a right and a wrong way to do everything. If you're uncertain, have no clue, the best thing you can do is seek professional advice from a reputable dog trainer in how to actually use the check chain. But just briefly, for the purposes of this video, what's really important is that the chain runs freely through the passive O-ring, that when the lead is loose, pressure, tension is released from the chain. This is a really important point and I'll show you why if we take the check chain off and put it on the wrong way. So let's assume you don't know your alphabet or perhaps you are Russian. There's a Russian P and you decide to pop this over your dog's head, woof, woof. Immediately, you can see the passive, when we pull the active, this is the active O-ring, when we pull that, it doesn't pass freely through the passive O-ring, it just sticks. And when it sticks like this, this is going to cause tension around the dog's neck. It's going to cause frustration. It's going to cause stress. And rather than solving your dog's problems, it's going to heighten them. So let's go from one controversial piece of equipment to another. In my pocket, I have one I prepared earlier. This is a French collar. It has lots of names, but that's all politics, and I guess those names depend on where you sit, agenda-wise, in the dog politics community. It originates from the show ring, and it was designed to sit high on a dog's head and keep the dog's head up whilst it's being shown off to a judge. So what can we say about the French collar? Well, it gets a bad press, and, and I understand that. This isn't a bit of equipment that, in our opinion, should be used day to day by pet dog owners. It's certainly not something that you should be using unless you know what you're doing or you've had good instruction on it. 
So how and when would we use a French collar? Well, it's important to remember that not all dogs are little Tweety Pies that will do anything for a bit of chicken. And this bit of equipment is a really valuable resource if you're working with strong, maybe out of control dogs, reactive, dangerous to people. And what it allows us to do with minimal physical conflict is get that dog under control. So why does the French collar get a bad rep? Well, in our opinion, there's too many dog trainers, dog owners that are using these as a matter of course for entirely the wrong reasons. So I said beforehand that this is a specialist bit of equipment. So if you think your dog needs it or you need to know how to use it, then you really need to contact a professional. Finally, let's move on to some safer ground. Good old flat collar although i'm sure there are some people that will find this offensive in that case you need to go and see our harness video so there's not a lot i can say that hasn't already been said about a flat collar but i'll try so it's been reinvented over and over again comes in lots of different shapes sizes collars buckles etc it's been around for about thirty thousand years if it ain't broke let's not fix it what's really important is that it is fitted correctly so that means it's not too loose that your dog can back out of it and it's not too tight that your dog's choking in it. It's common sense, really. So there you have it, the politics of dog chains and indeed equipment. I hope you've liked the video, found it informative. If so, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss out on the next in the series of equipment videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification switched on.